Welcome to a beginner's guide for my time at Sandrock. In this video, I want to show you how to start off with a decent amount of cash, a few easy ways to recover your stamina points, how to make your weapons overpowered, as well as sharing the secrets to bend time and space to your will. All in existence, bent to my will! Okay, well, that might be a slight exaggeration, so let me cover it first. My time at Sandrock is one of those games that has a lot going on. From building and gathering, to fighting and trying to have a social life, you can easily find yourself running out of time. If you feel like time is going too fast, or too slow, there's actually a feature in the options menu that lets you change your game speed. Now by default, your game speed will be set to 1. If you lower it, the in-game clock will move slower, and if you increase it, it'll go faster. Here I've made a short side-by-side -side comparison to show you the difference between the minimum game speed of 0.6, the standard game speed of 1, and the maximum game speed of times 3. Whether you want to slow things down or speed it up really depends on the situation. For example, if you want to play my time at Sandrock like it's a dating sim, well, you'll need as much time as you can to run around and chat with all your waifus and husbandos every day. Likewise, if you're planning a big day of gathering with lots of travel time in between, you might want to slow down your game speed as well. Although, more often than not, for me the reason I slow down time is because I'm worried about getting home late. You'll want to get home before midnight, just to maintain your well-rested buff. It gives you a bonus 10% experience, as well as one of four random buffs. If you stay up late too often, you'll start getting bags under your eyes. But this is mostly cosmetic. You can fix it temporarily with concealer, or go to bed on time to get a good night's rest. Now, most of the time I need to slow the game speed, but there's definitely times where you need to speed it up as well. In this clip I was trying to build the miners lift by the end of the first day. I had everything prepared and was just waiting for the bricks to finish being processed. What I didn't realise at the time was that you can actually recover stamina points by sitting in a chair. I've tested a few different chairs and they all seem to give you about 15 stamina per hour. Except for the cute lazy sofa that gives you about 13. I know it's not much but if you're going to be waiting around doing nothing, it's like Uncle Rico says. You might as well do something while you're doing nothing. In my time at Sandrock, they use a currency called Goals that you need for everything you do in the game. But on day one, you start with nothing. I have no money! <laughs> now sure, you'll make goals while you do commissions and play the game naturally. But being poor at the start of the game can really suck. And that's why you're going to want to visit Construction Junction, which you can find right next to the City Hall. Now, normally you come here to expand your workshop and buy upgrades, but since we definitely can't afford those, we're going to take a different approach. Right now we have a small lot and a big empty house, but you can actually shrink your house size to give you a pretty decent payout. First I shrink the roof, which gets me 750 golds. And next I shrink the rest of the house. I'm only leaving enough space to fit the bed and maybe a few other furniture items. You can delete the roof altogether for more money, but I think it looks better if you keep it. My door accidentally got deleted, so I'll replace that, and I'll delete a few other cosmetic items just for some extra money. Now the workshop's looking pretty tidy, and we have a decent amount of cash to spend. When I shrunk the house, my bed got moved to my mailbox, so I'll need to place it down again before I can go to sleep. It's a tight fit, but it'll do for now. Now I've got just over four grand, there's only one thing to do. Gamble idiots, you'll see it as 99.8% big wins. Way to refresh does not condone gambling or safe scumming in any shape or form. One problem you'll have as a new plan is running out of stamina. And normally the only way to refill it is by sitting down, eating food or sleeping. But when you find yourself sleeping in the middle of the day because you don't have any stamina left, you might get a little frustrated. I'm hungry! I'm hungry! 
Now that we've made some money from downsizing our house, we can afford to start dining at the Blue Moon Saloon. You'll want to come over to the counter on the side to order food. As you can see, the menu is split up into six different categories, with each type of food giving you a different buff. Appetizers give you one extra toughness. The main course options give you a 10% experience boost. Meat increases your attack, while vegetables increase your defense. Desserts increase your critical damage, and drinks improve your critical chance. The base food price determines how much stamina you get back, but the cost to reward ratio is reduced the more you spend. If you're on a tight budget, you'll want to look at the daily special. It changes every day, but it's going to give you the most bang for your buck. You can eat at the Blue Moon Saloon twice a day. Each time, you can get a maximum of 202 stamina points back. So next time you run out of stamina, make sure you check out the Blue Moon Saloon. You might have noticed that most items in the game have a coloured outline. Outstanding quality. Items like weapons and furniture are either green, blue or purple to show outstanding, perfect or rare quality. When I first started, I made so many pick hammers hoping I'd be able to craft a rare. But even after 143 attempts, I hadn't managed to make anything above outstanding quality. I was missing a piece of the puzzle, and that piece was the refiner. The refiner increases the quality and levels of your items in exchange for gems. You can find these gems all over the open world as you progress through the main story. Upgrading your weapons will increase your damage, while clothing and furniture upgrades will increase the item's stats. Refining your crafting stations will increase their Q capacity, fuel capacity, and the randomly assigned buff. Just be aware that when you upgrade a crafting station, it resets its quality to outstanding. Once an item quality is rare, you can keep refining it to increase its level. Weapons and clothing can be leveled up 10 times, while tools can only be leveled up 5. To me, there's something cool about having the lowest level weapon, but still being able to absolutely wreck your opponents with it. I could keep going into more details about specific numbers and all that jazz, but I think it's best if you just experiment with the refiner and see what you like. So next time you're playing My Time at Sandrock, make sure you use the refiner to make the best gear. Check in at the Blue Moon Saloon when you run out of stamina, if you need some early game cash, check out Construction Junction. And if you need to slow down, check out your game speed. If you want to watch more My Time at Sandrock gameplay, check out my Let's Play series. I'll be focusing on finishing Season 1 as soon as I get this video out. I want to respond to some comments in the next episode of my Let's Play. So if you have anything you want to talk about, feel free to comment them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.